Okay, last kind of equation solving that we're going to work on. So yippee, we're on to the last kind. Um, this is variables on both sides. And this is 4.2, last thing we're going to do on pages 203 and 205 in the book. Um, and the idea is that you always want to get the variable on one side of the equation, the equal sign, and the constants or numbers on the other side. So right now, variables are on both sides, left and right. So you want to move them so that all the variables are together, either to the left or all the variables are together to the right. So really, the first thing you should always look for is, do you have parentheses? Second, combine like terms. Then, this is the new piece today, step three. Move the smaller, that's the big hint, Move the smaller variable coefficient to the side of the larger variable coefficient. Because 90% of the time, that's going to give you a positive variable. And it's easier, you can't solve for a negative, it's easier to solve for a positive variable. So this is the new piece here that we're adding in. Getting the variables to one side of the equation. So I'm looking at example one here and it says 5x plus 8 equals 7x, x on both sides. Um, I don't have parentheses, I don't have like terms. I have an x on the left and an x on the right. Look for the smaller one. Well, 5x's is smaller than 7x's. So I'm going to do the opposite of this positive 5x, and it, yes, it is a positive 5x, and subtract 5x. So I'm getting all my variables now to the right side of the equation. These cancel. That's new. You haven't seen that before. 8 equals 7x, take away 5x, 2x. So now I have all my variables on one side and my constants on the other side. So now it's just a one-step equation. Divide by 2, divide by 2, these cancel, and you get 4 is equal to that x. Now the checks are going to be a little different because now you have x in a couple places. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 8. And on the right side, I have 7 times 4, which is 28. So I have 20 plus 8, which is 28, equals 28, yippee, correct answer. The checks get longer as the equations get more complicated. The more steps in them, the longer the check. So number two, I don't have any distributive property. That's always what I look for first. But I do have variables on both sides. So this step three up above says look for the smaller one. 3x's is smaller than 7x's. I'm going to do the opposite of that 3x. It's a positive 3x. So I'm going to subtract 3x's from both sides. And I'm going to combine them just like they were numbers. Um, three at positive 3x's and negative 3x's cancel. And I get 5 equals 7x take away 3x is 4x. And bring down the negative 11. So now you have a two-step equation left. Well, we know how to solve these. We undo the adding first. So now all my numbers are on the left side and my variable is left on the right side. So I have 16 equals 4x. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and you get 4 equals the x. Um, putting that back in to check, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Putting that x back in on the right side, 7 times 4 is 28, take away 11. That equals 17. Yippee. Correct answer. Example number three. I don't have the distributive property, but I do have combine like terms. Step two up above. Combine like terms comes before moving the variable to one side or the other. So I have 11 m's, take away 5 m's. That's 6 m's. Bring down the negative 13 equals 8 m's plus 3. What's smaller, 6m's or 8m's? 6m's. So I'm going to do the opposite of this positive 6m, and I'm going to subtract 6m's on both sides, doing the balance. And you get negative 13 on the left equals 8m's. Take away 6m's is 2m's plus 3. Two-step equation. Undo the adding. By showing subtracting 3 on both sides, make sure you're showing all your symbols. And you get 10 equals 2 times what number f? Well, I know that answer is 5, because when I divide by 2, 
I get 5 is equal to m. So my check looks like, oh, oops, not right answer. Hopefully you caught what I did wrong here. Negative 13 and negative 3 is negative 16 equals those two m's, not 10, dividing by 2. Negative 8 equals m. So now doing my check, I know that wasn't the right answer. So I have negative 8 equals m. 11 times negative 8, that's negative 88. Take away 13, that makes negative 101. Negative 5 times negative 8 is positive 40. So negative 101 plus 40 is negative 61. On the right side, negative 8 times positive 8 is negative 64 plus 3. Oh, that's negative 61. Yay, right answer. Not too silly you. Okay, next one, number 4. Oh, it has a distribute in it. So this is the first one where we have to do the distributive property first. So, um, no, I'm not going to divide by 4 because 10 doesn't divide by 4 and 2 doesn't divide by 4. That gives me, I mean, they do, but it's not a whole number. So if my other numbers won't divide by 4, I can't do that method of the distributive property. I actually have to distribute. So 4 times 5n is 20n. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. And on the right side, I just bring down 10n plus 2. So smaller is 10n's, not the 20n's. So I'm going to start there. The opposite of positive 10n's, negative 10n's. Negative 10n's and positive 20n's combines to 10n's. Negative 28 equals 2. Two-step equation. You can see that we're always coming back to that two-step equation. You should be very comfortable with Okay, now I've got to add first on both sides. And I get 30, and then I divide on both sides. So these two operations should be easy for you to finish the problem, because we've done that lots and lots and lots of times. So n should equal 3. Well, 5 times 3, going back to my equation, 5 times 3 is 15, take away 7 is 8. So I have 4 times 8 on the left side, and 10 times 3 is 30 plus 2, that's 32. And 4 times 8 does equal 32. So yippee, I've got the right answer. Now, I made an oops on this next page, and I copied 6 and 7 twice. So I just crossed off number 6 and 7 on the top because they're also like this 6 and 7 in the middle here. So I'm going to go on to this 6 and 7, so not as many problems, um, in the middle. And I have 3 and 4 tenths y and 3y. Which one's smaller? 3y's. So I'm going to subtract 3y's from both sides. And be careful that you're lining up your decimal. Yes, that's 3 and no tenths y. So they cancel on the right, but on the left I have 4 tenths y. Take away 5 and 2 tenths equals 2. Two operations. I'm going to undo that subtraction first by adding 5 and 2 tenths. And again, being careful to line up decimals. The decimal on 2 is at the end, so it really is like 2 and no tenths. So you get 4 tenths y equals 7 and 2 tenths. Dividing by 4 tenths, dividing by 4 tenths. I'm going to make them both whole numbers by multiplying both by 10. So now I have 72 divided by 4, which is something I can do in my head. That y equals 18. So 3 and 4 tenths, this is not a nice check, and you're probably going to want to use a calculator to start doing some of your checks, which, yes, we're going to start using calculators. Um, 3 and 4 tenths times 18 is 61 and 2 tenths minus 5 and 2 tenths, so that equals 56. 3 times 18 on the right side is 54 plus 2. Hey, that's 56. So, yes, the answer is 18. Um, number 7. Now we have fractional coefficients here. How do I know which one's bigger? Because I always want to take the smaller one and move it. So, 5 ninths and 2 thirds would be 
six ninths. Oh, so five ninths is smaller. So I really have five ninths y minus one third. I'm getting the common denominator already. Six ninths y plus one. So I changed my two thirds y to six ninths. So I'm going to subtract five ninths from both sides because it's smaller. Start with the smaller coefficient and you'll be better off. Those cancel. And you have negative one third equals one ninth y plus one. I'm going to subtract one from both sides and then run out of room. So I'm going to come over here. Um, negative one third and negative one, well that's the same thing as negative three thirds. Might as well make them both thirds. Negative three over three is negative one. So negative one third and negative three thirds is negative four thirds. Moving this work up here equals one ninth y. Oh, multiply by nine. Multiply by nine on both sides because that's the opposite of dividing by one ninth. Is multiplying by nine. The multiplicative inverse three and nine they cross cancel. So I get negative twelve equals y. Ooh, that was a lot of work. And believe me, that check works. I'm not going to show you that check, but it does work. If we took out a calculator, you would see that that works. Because um, I already checked it. So, number 7 has distributive property. And I can't divide because 7 doesn't divide but into 13 nicely, and 13 doesn't divide into 7 nicely. So, I have to do the double distributing first. So, negative 7 times 1, negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 4 m's positive 28 m's. 13 times 2 m's, 26 m's. 13 times negative 3, negative 39. What's smaller, 28 or 26? 26. So subtract 26 m's, subtract 26 m's, and I get negative 7 and 2 m's equals negative 39. Add 7 to both sides, which is the opposite. I'm subtracting 7, and I get 2m equals negative 32. Divide by 2, divide by 2, m equals negative 16. Negative 4 times negative 16 is 64, positive 64, 1 plus 64 is 65, negative 7 times 65, negative 455. Um, 2 times negative 16 is negative 32, take away 3 more is negative 35 times 10 would be negative 355, and 3 more would be negative 455. Yay! So I'm kind of writing on top of my other work, but um, negative 16 is the correct answer because you get negative 455 equals negative 455. So I did check that one on to question number 8. Okay, we've got distributing and the like terms in number 8. So we've got to distribute first. Can't divide by 8, can't divide by 11 because they won't go in nicely. So I have to distribute. I get 32 ns minus 8 minus 12 m's. I'm distributing the 11. I get 22 m's and negative 66. 22 is smaller than 32. Subtract 22 m's. Oh, that's an n. Nope, not going to do that first. That's an n, not an m. I wrote m. That's an n negative 12 n's. Got to put like terms together first. Start over. Um, 32 n's and negative 12 n's is 20 n's. Take away 8 equals 22 n's minus 16. You should combine your like terms first. This is an n, not an m. I wrote it wrong. Um, so 20 n's. I'm going to subtract 20 n's from both sides. I think I caught that. Negative 8 equals 2 n's and negative 66. Two steps, 
Add 66, add 66. You get 56 equals, oh, 58, 58, 58. You get 58 equals 2Ns, divide by 2, divide by 2. You get 29 equals N. 29 is N. And yes, that check works because you have 572 equals 572 on both sides of the equation. Um, take out a calculator. You can check it yourself. Um, that's it for today. Lots of math tomorrow in class. Make sure you're asking questions if you need help.